How often do you hear people say, I'm so stressed out right now? Or, that makes me so anxious. How many times have you said it yourself? We often confuse stress with anxiety, and this confusion has led many of us to become afraid of one of the most natural and important states of our physical and mental health, our stress response. It seems to make sense that if stress is such a big part of our lives, we ought to take some time to think about what stress actually is and how we can manage it. It turns out that even how we think about the stress response has a big impact on how it affects us. Unfortunately, stress has developed a bit of a bad rap recently. And while there are certain types of stress that are not good for us, most of it is actually helpful. In fact, working through daily stressors is precisely how we build skills and resilience. It's time to start changing the conversation about stress. So let's say we have a big challenge in our environment, which is called a stressor. It could be an exam, a big assignment, or really most problems that we face. We start to feel the physical symptoms. They might be a racing heart, rapid breathing, body tension, or not sleeping. We're confronted by the challenge, and if we make it through, the stress response subsides or gradually goes away. Here's a map of a normal stress response. It may come on more quickly or gradually, but that's the general idea. The stress response is normal. It's actually our body's best effort to get us ready to face the challenges that come our way. Without some level of stress, we don't perform well. Same thing goes if we have too much. Now let's go back to when we first experienced the stress response. This is when we're at an important point where we can choose how we interpret those physical sensations. Let's call them path A and path B. On path A, we can think, I'm so stressed out. I'm overwhelmed. Here we go again. I can't handle this or I'm not going to go. Or on path B, we can think, my body's telling me I have something to face. This could be tough, but I'll find a way to get through it. My body is helping me to get ready to face this. These are two very different interpretations, and it turns out your interpretation of the stressor is what really matters. If we avoid situations or things that cause the stress response, it may make us feel better in the short term, but when we encounter the challenge again in the future, it actually makes the stress response even worse. On the other hand, if you think through what's causing your stress response in the first place, what strategies or problem solving you can use to face the challenge head on, it will reduce the intensity of the stress response. This is how we adapt and learn new skills to use the next time. Although the path B way of thinking may not come as naturally, and facing stressors takes courage, the more you practice this approach, the easier it will become. While the physical sensations of the stress response and anxiety are similar, the outcome is very different. The hallmarks of an anxiety disorder are persistent avoidance and withdrawal, where it causes major impairment in your life. That's more than just a stress response. So, putting this all together, let's start by labeling stress for what it is. The stress response. It's normal. It's a motivator. It isn't anxiety or depression. It's just stress. Next, check your thinking and try to interpret stress as helpful. I'm going to build some new skills. My brain is ramping up to help me get through this. Then, ask yourself, how am I going to step up to the problem causing me stress? What strategies do I have and who can I ask for help? And finally, you may choose a helpful stress management technique, such as box breathing, mindfulness, physical exercise, or something else. But remember, calming strategies ultimately provide temporary relief until you're able to face the stressor. So the more we understand our stress response, the easier it becomes to manage. For more information about stress and anxiety, Check us out at teenmentalhealth.org.